Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General, Brigadier General Jason E. Kelly, and the Post Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Eric Oaks, welcome to the United States Army Training Center and Fort Jackson for the retirement review of two soldiers and graduation of companies A, B, C, D, and E from the 3rd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, 193rd Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Woodley Pierre. Join me in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word that declares that the prize is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to the one that endures unto the end. Lord, thank you that these soldiers here today have endured unto the end, O oh God. As we gather to recognize and to celebrate their accomplishment, Lord, we thank you for your provision of strength over the last 10 weeks. Thank you that victory indeed starts here at Fort Jackson, O oh God. We are grateful, Father, for the dedication, motivation, and discipline instilled over the course of basic combat training, as well as a necessary endurance, O oh God, to succeed. As these soldiers overcame hardships, anxieties, fear, they earned the right today to truly call themselves U.S. Army soldiers. And they now, God, are fit to live as examples of the Army values. Today, Father, I ask for a special blessing on over their future training, God, for their travels, Lord, for their families, Lord. And lastly, I thank you for the families that supported them throughout this process. Thank you for the cadre and the staff, O oh God. I pray for a blessing over this class and each and everyone here over this ceremony. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see here who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation in the careers of two lifelong soldiers and for our newest soldiers. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training. Far fewer are able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier. But those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day, and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of our retirees' lifelong dedication to our nation and are truly honored that the next generation standing on this field have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today, from your left to right, are the 282nd Army Band under the command of Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kevin Pick, graduating soldiers from Company A and B, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from companies C, D, and E. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated, non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system, selected based on professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Fred J. Grooms, Jr., who serves as the battalion executive officer for the 3rd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Audrey D. Hurdle. On her left is Command Sergeant Major Ricardo Moreno, the battalion's senior non-commissioned officer 
master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. The commander of troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. The soldiers and drill sergeant coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all Armed Forces veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the retirement of two lifelong soldiers. All soldiers begin their journey by graduating from basic combat training. Over the years, there have been changes to how the Army conducts basic training. However, many things remain the same. It was during basic training that these two soldiers were first introduced to the Army values. It is where they learned the importance of teamwork and that the Army truly is a family. That sense of team and Army family is still embedded in what is done here today. Over 25 years ago, these soldiers took the same oath to defend this nation that your loved ones on the field have taken. We salute these great soldiers as they pass the torch of freedom along to the newest generation of soldiers, your loved ones standing on the field today. A certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States will be presented to those retiring today. It reads, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during critical times in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. I trust that in the coming years you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you served. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. 
My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. A certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff, United States Army, is also presented to those retiring today and to the spouses of today's retirees for their dedicated service to our nation. At this time, Colonel Hutton and Command Sergeant Major Oaks will recognize our retirees for their service to the United States Army. Command Sergeant Major Aaron L. Hicks, having served honorably for 25 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 October 2023. Command Sergeant Major Hicks entered active duty in Columbus, Ohio, and will reside in South Carolina. Upon retirement, Command Sergeant Major Hicks will travel, continue to grow, and spend time with family and friends. Her fondest professional achievement was showing her son the honor in serving your country. The nation salutes Aaron L. Hicks, Command Sergeant Major, United States Army, retired. Command Sergeant Major Randy B. Gray, having served honorably for 30 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 March 2024. Command Sergeant Major Gray entered active duty at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and will reside in Huntsville, Alabama. Upon retirement, Command Sergeant Major Gray will start a new career that he can dedicate another 20 years to and have a work schedule that allows him to fully enjoy time with his loved ones and friends. His fondest professional achievement was seeing his soldiers become successful through promotions, accomplishments, and skills. The nation salutes. Randy B. Gray, Command Sergeant Major, United States Army, retired. Please join me in another round of applause for our retirees and their families. Although newly retired, they will always be a part of our Army family. The soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants, who are carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, the drill sergeant of the cycle for the 3rd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, will recite the drill sergeant creed. We ask that all drill sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the drill sergeant creed.
and always, I am an American soldier, born to defend the Constitution for the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I am a drill sergeant. This will defend. Lieutenant Colonel Hurdle and Command Sergeant Major Moreno will now present the awards. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for the 3rd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment is Drill Sergeant Nelson Rivera from Long Island, New York. The soldier leader of the cycle for Alpha Company is Specialist Cody Witherspoon from Charlotte Hall, Maryland. The soldier of the cycle for Alpha Company is Private First Class Autumn Davis from Hawkinsville, Georgia. The soldier leader of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private First Class Shane Bomar from Eugene, Oregon. The soldier of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private Cody Easterwood from Ohatchee, Alabama. The soldier leader of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private First Class Francesca Cow from San Jose, California. The soldier of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private Natalie Thompson from Pomona, Missouri. The soldier leader of the cycle for Delta Company is Private First Class Samuel Thompson from San Antonio, Texas. The soldier of the cycle for Delta Company is Private First Class David Palmer from Jacksonville, North Carolina. The soldier leader of the cycle for Echo Company is Private First Class Soleil Rosenby from Erie, Pennsylvania. The soldier of the cycle for Echo Company is Private First Class Jawan Jackson from Miami, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Audrey D. Hurdle. Good morning. On behalf of the Deputy Commanding Officer, U.S. Army Training Center, Fort Jackson, Colonel Mark Putnam and Sergeant Major Eric O. Post Command Sergeant Major, I'd like to welcome our distinguished guests for today, Ms. Yvette Busico, Principal Directory, Direct Deputy for the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, Sergeant Major Kenyetta Gaskin, Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, and Civilian Aides to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Kevin Schwedo, Mr. Blair Schwedo, Ms. Anita Dixon, Mr. John Phillips, Ms. Angela Odom, 
Mr. Peter Hoffman, and Dr. Kim Moore, Superintendent, Richland, Richland School District 2, and other members of School District 2. The commander for the 193rd Infantry Brigade, Colonel Scott White, and Sergeant Major, and Sergeant Major John Duncan, the Brigade Sergeant Major. Distinguished guests, and most importantly, the family and friends of the Commando Battalion, welcome and thank you in joining us in honoring the accomplishments of Basic Combat Training Class 2304. As you may have noticed when you entered at Fort Jackson, signs along the way state, we make American soldiers. Here at Fort Jackson, we produce over 50% of the Army's throughput of basic combat trainees annually, which is no small feat to accomplish. As the we in that statement implies, this is, in fact, a team effort to produce the finest quality of soldier that this country demands. I'd like to take a few minute, moments to recognize those involved. I'd like to thank the 282nd Army Band. As always, y'all sound great. You consistently provide that touch of class and distinction to all these important ceremonies week after week. I'd like to ask all of you in the audience to please join me in a round of applause and thanking the band for their attendance today. Since 1917, Fort Jackson, Fort Jackson has helped forge America's warrior class as it transforms civilians into disciplined, physically fit, proficient, gritty members of a team to fight and win our nation's wars. Today, it serves as the Army's premier training center and the largest makers of American soldiers. These soldiers, regardless of the changes of technology, tactics, or strategies employed, remain the one constant of war and conflict. As such, the Army prides itself on being in the people business, and the commandos and the rest of the team here at Fort Jackson are in the business of producing and developing the best people to serve as our soldiers, non-commissioned officers, and commissioned officers. I'm extremely proud to be a part of that mission, and I promise you that our future is in good hands with the soldiers standing on the field today. They are our mission, and our mission is critical. When the soldiers assembled on the field arrived here back in July, many of them quickly realized that this might be the greatest challenge of their lives. Out of the 1,200 civilians that started, 1,162 soldiers met the challenge and stand before you today. Here are some interesting facts about this class. They're quite a diverse group. The youngest soldier is 17. The oldest is 42. They come from 38 different states and territories, 18 different countries, and speak 74 different languages. Many soldiers in this formation have their degrees. 43 have an associate's degree, 29 have their bachelor's degree, and nine have a master's degree. <laughs> 11 soldiers have crossed over from a sister service. To you, I welcome you to the greatest branch of service, the United States Army. Five soldiers were former non-commissioned officers and decided to volunteer once again. To you, we say welcome back to the team. And lastly, we welcome 57 newly naturalized United States citizens. Thank you for your continued commitment to this great nation. Yet despite their unique and diverse backgrounds, what unites them all is that each one of these soldiers has raised his or her right hand and sworn to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Please help me in recognizing our newest soldiers. That said, we must recognize that our present is shaped by our past. 
And I want to start by recognizing our veterans and our retirees. We are a free nation because of the sacrifices of American service members who have fought for and continue to fight for our freedoms. Will the veterans and the retirees please stand to be recognized? Soldiers, you are now part of their legacy, and I know you will do your best to honor and uphold that legacy throughout your time in service. Our regiment's history is rich, having participated in the battles of Hayes Bluff, Champion Hill, Black River, and on the 19th of May, 1863, the regiment took part in the assault at Vicksburg, earning its motto, First at Vicksburg, becoming the first and only Union unit to plant its colors on these Confederate positions. We are proud of this history and serve in its distinguished lineage. The soldiers in front of you today will later serve in other units with their own unique history and a future story that they will one day proudly be a part of. Not unlike their predecessors, these soldiers have begun their journey of service to our nation and will now contribute to that history that has not yet been written. Their personal history began when they arrived 10 weeks ago. The beginning of their training was about discipline, fitness, and confidence, becoming a soldier. They con conducted countless inspections, they learned how to march, and challenged themselves to improve their physical and mental fitness. Shortly thereafter, they gained trust in their military equipment by wearing their chemical protective mask in our gas chamber and learning how to accurately fire their weapon systems at varying distance and under stress. They gained confidence in their training, their leaders, and again in themselves. Each completed a series of challenging yet critical Army tasks, test testing their mettle and adaptability and becoming proficient in their warrior tasks. They gained mental fortitude and toughness through daily physical fitness and by marching great distances under heavy loads. These tests of grit and discipline showed the importance of recognizing your role in a member of a team and the importance of taking care of each other because each other is all you might have. While they leaned on each other, they were led by their amazing drill sergeants. This group of hand-selected and elite experts represent the best this Army has to offer to train our soldiers. They, they served many long days and nights, sacrificing much, but doing so with a sense of pride and purpose to transform your soldier into someone who they could one day be better themselves. Cycle after cycle, they arrive before the trainees, wake and depart only after they bed down. Almost all present here today in the stands and on the field will forget my name, but they will most certainly remember their drill sergeant. Soldiers, you have met the call to service and sacrifice that many in our country are unwilling or unable to make. Less than 1% of Americans elect to serve in the United States military, making you a part of an elite few willing to commit the last full measure of devotion and service to our nation. Take pride in the profession you've joined. Always remember you are part of a great team of fellow soldiers serving in defense of freedom across the world. You've met the standard, and you're ready to learn your, cho your chosen crafts. While your victories may have started here, do not let them end here. Our country needs you trained and ready for any situation. Finally, remember the price of freedom is eternal. Remain vigilant as you go off onto our Army world and accomplish your missions. Each is important to the success of our Army, our nation, and our way of life. To our extended Army families, thank you again for your attendance and for your tremendous support to our soldiers in the nation. Please continue to help and support your new soldier. They've become something different, something better than they once were. They are now a part of the greatest army in the world and for, will forever be a part of our legacy. 40 rounds, no ground to give. Victory starts here. Thank you.
Today's soldier is above all a warrior, adaptive, confident, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in Army values, and determined to destroy enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army Soldiers' Creed embodies this commitment. To the soldiers on the field, the uniform you wear at this moment is more than an outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation and an unspoken assurance to all who see you that you are a willing and able protector of the freedom spot so arduously by all who have gone before and those who will bravely come after. You have become what you set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Private Cow presents a certificate of appreciation to the retirees and leads the soldier standing before you through the reciting of the Soldier's Creed. In consideration of those around you, we ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it has passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of awardees may meet their soldier under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldier on the field once instructed to by the narrator. The 13th Infantry Regiment was constituted in May 1861 when the Army expanded the regular Army during the American Civil War. During the Civil War, the regiment fought its way to Vicksburg by participating in the battles of Hayes Bluffs, Champion Hill, and Black River, taking the fight out of Confederate forces upon reaching Vicksburg. On 19 May 1863, the 13th Infantry Regiment participated in the assault on Vicksburg, thus earning its official motto of First at Vicksburg. The regiment was the only Union regiment to plant its colors on the Confederate positions. The 13th Infantry Regiment is the only unit to be led by both General William Sherman, 
known as America's most aggressive maneuver commander, and General Philip Sheridan, the greatest Union cavalry officer. From 1867 to 71, the regiment fought in the Indian Wars in Montana and North Dakota. In June of 1889, the regiment was sent to Cuba and led the first infantry's attack on San Juan Hill, capturing the Spanish flag. The regiment saw action in the Philippines during the Philippines insurrection and was assigned to the 8th Infantry Division in June 1918. The regiment found itself fighting through the hedgerows of France in July of 1944 as a member of the 8th Infantry Division and led the drive to the Eye River. The regiment spent 10 months in combat in northern France, the Rhineland, and Central Europe. It occupied a position on Siegfried Line and was involved in the bloody battle of Hurchin Forest. After multiple activations and inactivations, on 27 February 1987, the 13th Infantry Regiment was transferred to the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command and reorganized at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Currently, the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Battalions of the 13th Infantry Regiment conduct basic combat training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. As a reminder, we ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. is the commander of troops, Major Fred J. Grooms, Jr., and the battalion staff. The 282nd Army Band is commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kevin Pick. The drum major is Staff Sergeant Jacob Davis. by Captain Rolanda Taylor. First platoon is led by Senior Drill Sergeant Jesse Ozuna and trained by Drill Sergeant